I'm just going to talk a little bit about my particular history with adapting books to screen and and then talk particularly about the fa my experience with the family law and, and why it's such an Im important project both for Matchbox and I think for the Australian television landscape. My first experience of uh, book adaptation was, was actually Holding the Man. Um, my friend Tim Conagrave had written the book um, um, and handed me the first manuscript two days before he died and I read it overnight and I went back to him and said oh I, I love this book so much you know like I was complete it was a complete mess uh, um, you know I stayed up all night reading it and and in the 24 hours from when I'd seen him last to going back to say I, I really wanted to um, uh, option the book and turn it into a movie uh, he had developed dementia and he died 24 hours later but I sort of felt this obligation to both Tim and to the book and to the story to give it a go and I think that was possibly the worst possible motivation for me for trying to adapt a book into a, a film because um, I, I worked on it for about four years and I honestly just could not do it. Uh, my first draft came in at 210 pages. I, I could barely change a word and at that stage what I, what I learned was that what, well, what I felt, I, I, I sort of made a lot of documentaries and I, I kind of wanted to really honour the book and honour the process and, and I didn't change anything. And, you know, and I, I was so literal in the way that I tackled the adaptation that it basically killed the project. And you know, after about four years, I just sort of said, oh, this isn't even close to a film. And you know, like I know what a film should look like and this doesn't look like one. And so I, I put it aside and then, you know, fortunately, Tommy Murphy picked it up and, and David Berthold picked it up uh, at uh, Griffin a number of years later and they, they made that in incredible play, play and then that play then had its own life and became a movie again and, and is the wonderful movie that, that's made now. But um, that first experience of adaptation, uh, you know, it was basically what everything you could possibly do wrong I, I kind of did and um, and so the, the next experience for me was actually the slap and um, and at the time Christos was, has been a friend for a long time and um, I got the manuscript about um, nine months before it was published and um, I was said I was told read this and of course I didn't. <laughs> you know, I just put it by the side of my bed and didn't think, didn't think about it again. And then it came out and um, it was like this ma massive success. And fortunately, Christos's manager is a friend of ours. And, and at that stage, it, you know, it was a sensation. Everyone was bidding for it. And uh, Michael just said, we're going to hold off making a decision until you read it, Tony. So then the pressure was on. So I, I kind of read it and realised, you know, as soon as, soon as I read it, I, I realised why everyone wanted to, wanted to um, option it. And also, I also realised that it was um, a television project and not a film project. And, um, and so we were, you know, Matchbox was p part of the bidding war for, for the slap. And it was an absolute, you know, it was an absolute war. Like every producer in Australia was, was after the project. And, in the end, uh, and Christos also was toying with whether it should be a TV series or a movie because he, he's a cinephile and he loves movies. Um, but in the end, I wrote him a letter talking about the, the, the process and, and what we, why it was important for us to do it and the way that we would do it. And, and, and the process was always about honouring the book and honouring him as a writer and treating the, um, the project with integrity and being inclusive of him in, in, along the way. And I think more than money, um, uh, that those things were really important to him. Fortunately for us, he'd had a really shit experience on his last book adaptation or, you know, last um, adaptation experience. And, uh, and so it, it, it really rang, rang true to him when he heard those things. And so, and so we, we, got, we got the rights. And, and if, 
if holding the man was like the worst possible experience for adapting a book, then uh, the slap was the best possible experience for uh, adapting it. And um, it was my first experience of the writer's room and and the, the power of the writer's room in, tele, in television. And, and that, that, that was a huge learning experience for me because um, uh, I'd, I'd never really done one before. And it was, it was also, also my first TV uh, series experience. And so what we had was we had Kate Shortland, who's a genius. Um, we had Brendan Cowell, the actor slash playwright slash director. Uh, we had Emily Ballou, the novelist. Uh, who was just starting to explore screenwriting. Um, Alice Bell, who's the creator and writer, ma main writer on Beautiful Lie. And um, Chris Merkser, who uh, has done everything from Underbelly to, um, I, I think he did East West 101. I mean, he's, he's a phenomenon. And, and so we had all of those writers with Amanda Higgs and myself and uh, some interns all in a room, and we just basically talked about what the book could be for three weeks. And, uh, and Christos came into the room as well. And one of the great uh, th things that he did, which allowed us to make the show that we made, was he, he said very early on, um, this is your project. The book was mine, the TV series is yours. You know, like, so, th and that's his philosophy on what adaptation is for him. Like, it's, it's not, he wasn't precious about holding on to things, and he, and he gave us the ability to invent and to let go. And, and that, um, for, for, for me, that, that was the great lesson about adaptation, that, that the more you can let go of the, the book, the more that you can actually find the truth in the book. Uh, and and the, the thing that draws you to it initially, the, 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 the impulse that makes you want to make it, sometimes it's because, uh, you know, it, it might be a commercial impulse because it's sold millions of copies and you, 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 know, you, know, you know where to place it. Or sometimes it could be just a deeply personal impulse, which is that no matter how well it's done, you just, there's something in the story that you love that, um, that impulse, will, you have to trust that that impulse will eventually find its way onto the screen in its form, in its rightful form, uh, but that if you try to literally adapt a book into a, a, screen, a screenplay, it's, it's a very tough thing to do because very few books are actually naturally screenplays. I mean, the thing about books is that you have this wonderful ability to go into the, an interior mind and, and screenplays are almost all, all verbs, they're all actions, they're all what does one person do to, to another person. Um, and so, so you, there, there's a lot that can go missing in translation. I mean, some, some books do naturally adapt and others, and others absolutely, absolutely don't. Uh, but you do have to trust that there is a process that you, that you, you, you start and you, you take, that takes you along the way and that hopefully that, that process will take you to something that finally ends up on screen. And yeah, so, so the slap was my first and, and it was a very happy ex experience because Christos gave us uh, his imprimatur to change things. So we kept changing things. He even suggested changing more stuff than we actually ended up changing. Um, but what, what was really interesting was that often when we were stuck, uh, we would find a line in the book or something that we, from, from a different kind of chapter. And um, it would give us the answer to a character, you know, like, and, and I think that, you know, we found, we, at the end of the process, Christos often forgot what was in the book and what was on the, on the uh, TV series. Like, like for instance, um, he taught, in, in the book, um, Anouk's mother had died of cancer years ago, but we kind of felt like she needed some other kind of current burden in her life, which was not about her work. So we brought her back to life. And uh, Christos always talked to us as though she, she was alive in the book, but we had, we had to remind, remind him that, no, she was dead. Um, so, that, so that was a, a, a the opposite experience.